I'm Dr. Brenda Koo, and I am going to talk to you a little bit about foam rolling. Foam rolling is what I like to call the missing link in total health and wellness, and it is something that is an effective tool for uh, not only treating sore, tight muscles, but also decreasing scar tissue, decreasing places that might have limited range of motion, uh, and what you hear maybe a little bit about, but doesn't quite make sense is what we call myofascial adhesions, where the muscle and the fascia have stuck together. And so you might think a muscle is tight, but in fact your body is sticking together a little too much. And, um, and it reduces those adhesions by helping the body and the cells and the tissues get more hydrated. As we age, our body naturally becomes more dehydrated. Um, and the less we work out uh, and the less we exercise and um, are active, um, the less our body is hydrated. So the foam roller is, is like getting a nice long massage on a daily basis uh, for just a few minutes a day. Uh, it's something that uh, a lot of people don't do because they often think it's painful. But unfortunately, those places that are painful are the places that your body needs this the most. And the more often you do it, the less painful it's going to be. So don't not roll because it's tender and painful. Just roll for more often, less amount of time, and that tenderness will decrease over time. So my three rules of thumb with foam rolling are, number one, stabilize your body because you're going to be on a moving object and you need to make sure your body is supported. And that is the, the number one priority so you don't injure yourself in some way. Uh, number two is go slow and go in small increments on the body, especially if you have a long muscle like your quadricep or your IT band, don't do the whole thing. And like your spine, don't do the whole thing in one big roll. You can't support your body, which is rule number one. Um, and you want to go slow to find those tender spots and then just stay on them for a long amount of time. Uh, a long amount of time means a minute or two, so that tenderness decreases a little bit. And if the tenderness doesn't decrease at all, go back to it the next day and just keep at it every day and that you'll see that tenderness decrease over time. Um, and the third one is your weight increases the intensity. So if you need to decrease the intensity, find a way to put less weight on the foam roller. If you need to increase the intensity, find a way to put more weight on the foam roller or go down to a tennis ball in some places of the body and that'll decrease um, or increase that intensity a lot. So I'm going to go over just a quick little demonstration of how to foam roll the spine because a lot of us think about our legs, our quads, our IT bands, our butt even when we think of foam rolling but we don't think about our spine and all of those muscles of the upper back and the lower back that might be tender and tight just from sitting all day long. So you're going to lay your foam roller, always have your foam roller near you, and you're going to put it nice and close to the bottom. Now the thing about the low back is that you want to move in small increments, so I'm going to only do from the middle of my back to the top of the bones of my pelvis. And, um, and the hardest part about the low back is supporting your neck. So you're going to get a nice, it's very difficult to hold your hand behind your head, so you're going to cross your arms either over you, or I like to put my elbows on the floor for my body, but my neck is kind of just hanging in midair. So if you find this is a lot of strain on the neck, again, shorten your amount of time you do it so that you don't cause any injury to the neck. But it is a good little exercise for those neck muscles to get you to have a nice proper spine versus that chin out. Um, so think of it as a little exercise for the neck when you do this um, therapy on the low back. So with the low back, I'm going to lean over it, put my elbows on the floor and then lift my bum up. As I lift my bum, you'll see my back, my hips are in line with my low back. That is where I get the muscular um, focus. If I sink my butt, my low back is not healthy. And that's where we go back to supporting the body. So I'm going to pull my bum up, get my low back muscles on the foam roller, and now I'm supporting my body with my elbows on the floor, and I can just move with my feet my elbows are not moving, but they're supporting my body, but you'll see that my head is unsupported. So I want to tuck the chin in and try and just keep my head as stable as possible. And I'm going to do small increments. So I'm not moving much more than three, four inches back and forth on that little belly. Now if I want to get closer to the mid-back, I stop, move my body, and now I'm more on the mid-back in a small area. 
So if you see, if I were to do a big action, I wouldn't be supporting my body, and I would be violating rule number one, which is support the body. So I want to stay in small movements. If I want to get closer to the hips, I move my body up, and now I roll closer to the hips. So you're not doing too big of movements. You're just going where you can find that tender spot. Once I find the tender spot, I stay on it and go back and forth in about an inch or inch or so increments to get that tender spot to release. Now to do the upper back, I stop. I come up. I move my body to where the foam roller is at the mid back. Here's where I get to support my neck. So I scoot my bum away from the foam roller and I want to lift my bum up. Again, to be in line with the back. If I sink my bum, it's a nice back bend, but it, I don't want to move doing that because then the body's unsupported. So I lift my hips. I can rest my head and my hands, relax. And you might find this feels very good on the upper back. And I just move my feet to move my body a little bit. And I keep the bum lifted and the upper back is moving over the foam roller. I find a spot that's tender, say right there, and then I go back and forth. Small, little increments until that tenderness decreases. And you can go all the way up to the very top of the shoulders, base of the neck with the foam roller. And it doesn't matter if the elbows are up or the elbows are wide. What just matters is that the neck is supported and then I'm moving in small movements. My belly is turned on and my glutes, my bum, is nice and strong to keep my body lifted and supported. If I am not using the bum or contracting the glutes, my bum is going to sink and my low back is going to be in pain. So I want a nice strong belly and butt to keep the hips lifted or the pelvis lifted so that I'm supporting that body. I lower the hips slowly, and I slowly come up to come off of the foam roller. And that's the full spine from the shoulders to the top of the pelvis. Well, foam rolling in general, um, it primarily is uh, to decrease uh, muscular adhesions, increase hydration in the body and the tissues around those muscles and fascia, uh, and it decreases tight, um, tender, sore muscles. It uh, increases the length of muscles and the ability for the muscles to move within that fascial uh, compartment. And uh, it also will decrease scar tissue. So if you've got any injuries um, where you have increased scar tissue built up or maybe just a place that has limited range of motion either from a surgery or just in general of uh, maybe you are a tennis player and you just have over built up a certain area or increase that scar tissue in a certain area, most people will find that their range of motion might be limited on one side versus the other. Um, so it'll help increase range of motion in areas uh, that are um, restricted. So I'm teaching a weekly class on foam rolling on Wednesdays at noon. It's just a one hour class and we're basically going to focus a lot on technique and ensuring that in a protected environment you can foam roll your body. Learn places to foam roll that you might not know that it's possible, like the shoulder, the lats, the pecs, and things like that, um, as well as the calves, the shins for my shin splint people. Uh, and we will work on um, foam rolling various places of the body and showing you how to foam roll so that you can more effectively foam roll at home on a regular basis. Uh, and then, as well, I offer quarterly workshops. Uh, that are more um, uh, uh, longer and more full body focused than the class. The class is going to just be kind of a more regular basis, regular way to incorporate foam rolling into your daily routine. Um, as well, whereas the workshop is going to be that full body technique focus, longer um, instruction based focus for uh, people that are going to then come to the class, learn how to come to the workshop, learn how to do it, and then do it all at home on their own. Whereas the class is just one of those ways to, oh, I always need to kind of have somebody tell me all the time how to do something. And um, 
and or the people who are really honest with themselves that say, I don't foam roll, foam roll enough at home, so I, if I can just come to the class once a week, I'm going to get my foam rolling in. And let me tell you, foam rolling daily is great, but most of us don't have time. So if you can just do it once a week, even in the class, come on in, take the class, and, uh, and that's going to be a major benefit for your body versus not doing it at all. Okay? What are some